Hey everybody, Adam here, aka the CAD Junkie. Today we are talking about Onshape, as we've been doing for the last little bit here. Uh, one of the cool th coolest things about Witch is the rate at which it is changing. Every three weeks, you get a new uh, update with a slew of new features and bug fixes and all kinds of stuff. It's amazing to watch how fast this is happening. And today I want to talk about a bunch of brand new stuff. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to talk about holes, variables, feature patterns, replication, tangent mates, and a whole new versioning, branching, branching and comparison UI. And uh, again, this is just, it's, uh, it's just really cool to see how fast this stuff is being added. So uh, let's uh, let's talk about Onshape here. So um, here I am designing this little uh, sort of jam pot doodad. Uh, we got a little little mechanism over here that's gonna uh, tighten this guy down. I'm gonna hit Shift Seven, go to an isometric view, and then use the up arrow to kind of rotate it around upside down. So let's go over here to the uh, improved hole wizard, and uh, or I guess hole feature we should say, and uh, it is awesome. Um, I'm gonna do a countersink hole, and uh, we're gonna go blind in last, meaning in the uh, the last. Uh, component that we choose uh, and then uh, I'm going to go here to uh, sketch points place holes Let's choose this sketch point here and under the merge scope we want to make sure that we choose both the horseshoe and this sort of main lid housing and you can see that now our hole is blasting through both which is awesome and uh, of course we've got a million different settings and you don't have to have so many it depends on what you've chosen here if this is a very bare and simple hole this dialogue simplifies itself to only show you the stuff that matters to you we could set up a lot more parameters about this but i don't really care i'm just going to hit okay now i've got my hole awesome now i'd like to have this hole uh, arrayed around this entire horseshoe and uh, that brings us to feature patterns which are super awesome now i'm going to do a much more interesting feature pattern in a minute but I want to show you a very bare bones example here's a very basic feature pattern let's do a circular pattern entities to pattern we need to go from part pattern to feature pattern under features to pattern I'm going to click the hole here in my uh, history tree axis to pattern I can choose any uh, conical or cylindrical face I'm going to grab this conical face here and uh, I want to go I don't know, let's say 80 degrees and uh, flip that direction and I want fours of them and that looks pretty good to me yeah that's about right let's go ahead and hit ok that looks pretty good and I'm happy alright so that's pretty cool that's a very basic way of using a feature pattern but uh, let's jump into uh, what I think is a much more compelling example just to show you how uh, that sort of the elegance of this system I guess I want to jump into another part studio and uh, just to give you some context here this part studio is um, what I took a blank part studio and I did what's uh, called a derived part or I essentially imported uh, the geometry from that first part studio into this one with a link uh, and then I'm starting from there to add a bunch of little detail features like uh, minor radii and uh, just decorative things that generally an engineer wouldn't care about but that I like to have in there visually as I'm working. I'm also going to add little details like grip details and stuff like that. Again, all these sort of uh, ergonomic and, and cosmetic details that really make the model sing but that I really probably don't want mucking up the sort of structural integrity of this uh, of this nice clean and simple tree over here. So uh, here we are. I've already added a bunch of minor radii and that's all good. I want to add a grip detail down here and that's going to involve some sort of strips of material here and I'm going to do that using variables. The variable system in Onshape is super super cool. Rather than creating an entirely separate UI for variables where you know stack order is sort of mysterious and you're not sure when it's going to be evaluated in the tree etc here we have a very literal one-to-one -one place to put our variables if I just click the variable feature I can call it whatever I want let's call this our you know width let's say and this can be any uh, data type and uh, basically you just type in whatever data type you want ie um, degrees or radians or millimeters whatever it is you're using and uh, Onshape is going to intelligently set that data type I'm gonna set this to one degree to start with and hit OK so we got a starting point and then um, I'm actually going to do something a little bit odd don't worry we're gonna come back to that I'm gonna create another variable this time I'm going to call it width. I'm going to use the exact same name as the last one, uh, but uh, this time I'm going to come down here and set this to uh, width, which is the existing uh, the existing value of that width. Plus, uh, let's give it an extra four degrees. Okay. So when I hit OK, it's going to show me that width now equals five degrees. I've essentially entered the width twice, which makes no sense. Why the heck would I do that? 
stick with me one second. I'll show you. It's going to be pretty cool. Now I'm going to go here and uh, grab my revolve feature here. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to grab this sketch right here, and we're going to grab the revolve axis back here on the back. And uh, down here where it says full, let's change that to symmetric. And here's where the magic starts. I'm going to go ahead uh, into the uh, angle field, type a little hash sign, which means you're typing a variable here, and I'm going to type width. Okay, and, uh, and then uh, just click OK. And uh, that's, once I click OK, is going to merge with this uh, sort of orange flipper piece in the background. Now, I'd like to create more of these, and here's where the magic actually happens. First of all, let's jump in here and add a little bit more detail, just for funsies, and uh, because we can, using feature patterns, I'm going to grab these edges and just call this a 0.5 millimeter radius here on the end, and uh, let's rotate around and grab these ones too, and hit OK. And now, I want to pattern all of those features, and I want to do it in such a way that uh, the angle gets wider as it goes up, and it turns out that uh, that that works right here, which is pretty pretty nifty. So let's go up here to our um, linear pattern feature, and under uh, first of all, we need to make sure that this is a feature pattern, and under features to pattern, we need to grab the second width variable, the revolve and the fillet, all three of them. We need a direction. I could choose any linear element, uh, but I can also choose planar elements like plane. So I'm going to grab the top plane because that essentially uh, tells me the normal of top is up, and that's where I want this to go. And I want several of these. Let's call it five of them, and I want them to be two millimeters apart. And uh, I may or may not have to flip the direction of that. There we go. Let's flip that direction. Oh, flip it one more time. There we go. Let's hit OK, and as you can see, voila, we now have this cool little arrow shape. And uh, that exists because, now let me explain this, we've created a variable, sure. Then we created another variable that takes the existing value and increments it by a certain amount. It basically adds 4 degrees to whatever was there previously. Then we do our revolve and our fillet and whatever. When we do the linear pattern, I included that variable feature in the pattern, meaning that each iteration is going to add another four degrees to the previous one, ending up with this really cool sort of linear effect. There's actually a lot that you can do with this. It's a, it's a very powerful idea. I'm showing you a very sort of superficial example of how you might use that, but uh, but I'm telling you there are a lot of potential applications for that, and uh, and. I'm really excited about it. And also, just the general idea of having your variables out where you can see them in a place that evaluates in a predictable manner, where right in there with the rest of your features, is super, super convenient and, uh, and easy to understand, which I love. Okay, so let's talk about mating a little bit. I'm going to go over here to our uh, assembly 2, which is empty. Click on insert parts, and then I can choose which parts I want. I'm going to grab that lid and the uh, wire. I'm going to grab a little, little piece of the hinge here and that little flipper, and then we'll hit OK, and uh, F to zoom fit. I actually, I'm getting used to the navigation in Onshape. Took a while to get the hang of it, but uh, it's actually, it's not that bad. You know, once you get the hang of it, it is, uh, it's quite a serviceable UI, you might say. So what we need to do is actually get this thing kind of locked down. I'm going to start by dragging this flipper out, out of the way, as I often do when I'm mating things. I find it easier when I can just kind of see everything that's going on. I'm going to grab this guy, right click it, and fix. And uh, this one, I'm going to right-click that and fix it as well. Whenever you're doing mates in, uh, in a mechanical CAD system, it's a really good idea to have at least something fixed down, something locked down in space so it's not moving around. That way, everything else uh, has somewhere to go. Next, we want to lock this down. Uh, the first couple of mates are going to be uh, pretty sort of typical, typical normal on-shape mates. So let's go over here to our Revolute mate. I'm going to grab that one. And under mate connectors, let me just go in here. I'm going to zoom in here. Let's mouse over this face. I'm going to hold the shift key so I can choose which one of these I want. I'm going to grab this inside face here. There we've got one mate connector chosen. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. Let me mouse over this face, hold that shift key, and click on this guy. Boom. Now those guys are together. I'm also going to add some limits to this guy. I'm going to say the minimum is zero and the maximum is, I don't know, let's try 150 degrees and hit the play button and see what that does. That looks, uh, that looks relatively decent, so let's just hit OK to that. So now we have one mate, and if I drag this guy, he goes in and out. Awesome. That looks good. Um, this gets more interesting when you add the wire, though. Um, let's go ahead and, and add one more sort of typical Revolute mate. We'll just grab this middle guy here 
and rotate about and grab this middle guy here. What's cool about Revolute mates as opposed to traditional cylindrical mates is that you only have to click twice. You don't have to add a, both, a, uh, both a cylindrical mate and a planar mate to lock things into place. It just takes one single mate to do what used to take multiple mates to do. Pretty cool. Now we've got this extra sort of wire sticking out here. And what I need to do with it actually is stick it into this slot up here and have it stay exactly where it should be. And you can tell that uh, it's a little bit hard to work with right now because things are sort of flopping all over the place. Okay, so let's just pull this up where it's sort of kind of close-ish to where we want it to be. And now we want to use what is called a tangent mate. And tangent mates are a special case in Onshape. They're different from all the other mates in that they do not require the use of mate connectors at all. All I have to do is click one face and then another face. And those guys will now be tangent. Hit OK. And now when I drag this guy up and down, you can see that my latch is working perfectly uh, as I rotate. So as I pull this down, it goes uh, up to, to its resting position. You can pull that down. It does its little squeeze that these kinds of things usually do. And then pops right back up. So I can see the way that this guy would operate. There are ways to get around using a tangent mate to do this. You could create a bunch of extra sketches or something and kind of lock things into place that way. But the tangent mate is a much more convenient way to do it. Not to mention a much more flexible way. If this were something other than a perfectly flat, straight plane, then a tangent mate might be the only way to go. Now let's stay on the topic of uh, patterning for just a minute and uh, and add in a screw. Now th most of this is not very exciting, but there is one thing that's pretty cool. This is not new in on shape, but it's something that I freaking love and that most people don't know about. Something that other mechanical CAD packages wish they had. And uh, that is that I can go up here to my version history, which is awesome. And let's go back to my main here, which is the most recent uh, iteration of this prior to the current take of this video. Obviously I've tried this video more than once. And uh, when I go back there, I'm going to find a sketch. Let me just scroll down here. There's a particular sketch that I want, and that is, uh, I believe, sketch 17 right here. Let me uh, just zoom in over here. You can see I've already done the work of creating the, uh, the little X here for this Phillips head, and uh, I just don't want to bother doing that again in the new sketch. And uh, so what I can do is actually just grab that sketch, right-click it. Let's go down to Copy Sketch. Yes, folks, you can do that in here. Let's go here to Take 3, back where we just were. It's going to bring this back to uh, exactly what we were just working on. Rotate this sucker around. Let's grab this face, right click it, and head up to Paste Sketch. Yes, you can do that. And also, let's scroll down here and find said beautiful sketch. And after that, I'll just grab this center point, grab this vertex over here, and let's make those coincident. Bam! All right, just like that, I got that guy in there. No, I mean, obviously not the best workflow in the world. I should have uh, should have done this differently to start with, but the fact that you can do that in Onshape is pretty dang sweet, if you ask me. I'm going to grab uh, this face. Let's go to another sketch using that S key. I love the accelerator shortcuts in Onshape. Actually, once you start to get used to the Onshape UI, it's really quite quick to work with. Um, I'm, I'm definitely... Be I'm becoming a fan. I was not at first. I have to admit, it took me. I'm kind of a curmudgeon. It took me a while to get used to it, but uh, but it actually started to work for me. All right. So let's say we've got this down. This is uh, you know it's a cosmetic model after all. I really just need to to show the appearance of a fastener, not anything actual. We're just going to do a quick rendering or something like that. And uh, what I want to show you is if I go over here to the assembly number two that we just created, uh, the one with all the cosmetic parts in it, and rotate this stuff around. Remember, um, we don't have to use all parts from the same piece. If those engineering parts are good enough and I don't need to detail them, there's no reason to burden my details Part Studio with those, I can just add them here directly from that original structure file. So instead of grabbing, grabbing them from details, I'll grab them from structure. Let's uh, scroll down here. I'll grab the horseshoe and our little cone-shaped fake, uh, fake fastener. And here's where we come back to patterning. We're going to talk about replication in assemblies and on shape. Very cool new feature. Let's jump in here and uh, grab this, uh, this fastener. First thing we need to do is mate it into place. And we could use really just about any kind of mate to do this. I'm going to grab a uh, Revolute mate. And uh, let's grab this edge here. Importantly, I'm going to grab the edge and not a face. And then out here, I'm going to do the same thing. And in fact, you don't even have to come in and click on the mate connector itself. If you just click the edge, if there's only one mate connector, that's the one that it chooses. And then I can just hit OK. Then I'll just uh, right click this guy, fix it down. And now if I just grab this guy, it rotates like a head. Great. Perfect. So let's head up here to the replicate button and click that. Seed instances will be, say, this guy. And then we're going to match edges on face. Faces to find. I'll just click this guy. Boom! 
hit OK, it has automatically, auto-magically found all of the correct edges. Match these guys up. They have Revolut mates. Every one of them rotates just the way they should. Super duper cool. And uh, you can imagine um, that, even, you know, in this particular case, it would not take a whole lot to do this manually. But there are so many cases where it would take a lot of work to do it, especially if you have multiple parts and washers and bolts and all that kind of stuff that needs to move together. This is, uh, this is a lifesaver, you guys. All right, last but by no means least, let's talk about branching and merging and version history, which sounds like a really dry and boring topic. It is not. Okay, so um, <laughs> actually branching and merging has been with us from the beginning of Onshape, and it's always been one of the selling points. The problem is it was really hard to understand. It was, it, I'll be honest, it was kind of obtuse. When I first started using it, I could not figure it out. I understood the concept. But in practice, it was really hard to work with. Now it is great. I'm actually really happy with where it's ended up. If you look here in the uh, in the most recent version, the versions in history, we can see all of our branches in one place, really easy to read. And also, if I go up here to take three, which is what I've been uh, been recording uh, thus far in this video, I can click show changes, and it's going to show me the actual undo history for everything that we've done. It'll only show me uh, batches of 20 features at a time or 20 changes at a time. So I can click show more changes, show more changes. We can go back infinitely, as you know, with Onshape, it keeps uh, a record of every single thing that you do in here. In fact, uh, right before I started recording this video, I deleted a couple of features, right? This was the last thing I did, and then we jumped in and added that hole and, and got started. So if I come over here to the right, I can click on this guy and click Compare, which is an, another incredibly cool thing about Onshape. Let's say I'm not sure, or you know, I'm kind of being indecisive about what's going on, or even I just want to see what's happened, and I can't remember what all I have done since a certain point in time. This is the place where I can actually see that. So here we can see that in looking at this particular part studio, uh, the current take three has this little feature pattern down here. Whereas if I drag back to the original two features, you can see it shows them in red, meaning that they are not there anymore. So what uh, the difference between those two states is visibly apparent to me in the viewport, which I find super cool. But also over here on the left, we can see a list of things that have been added. You can see take three has all of these features that did not exist in uh, this earlier version of Take 3. So uh, very cool, very powerful. And by the way, we're only looking at this current Part Studio. But if we come up here, we can actually see um, all of the various tabs that have been changed. And you can see we've actually changed all of them since the beginning of this video. But you get the idea. If you're, if you're tracking changes on a particular um, part file that's important to your process, all of that stuff is logged here for you, and you can keep track of exactly what's going on in real time, which is an incredibly powerful thing to know. If something changes, you'll know exactly when it happened, by whom, and where you need to go back to if you should need to change that. All right, so that's all I got for you this week. And uh, I, think, I think the coolest thing about this is that the stuff we covered today is just the last few weeks. Of, uh, of Onshape, to be honest. I mean, this stuff coming out every three weeks is really mind-blowingly fast. For something that just came out of beta two months ago, this thing is pretty baller. Can you compare it uh, in terms of the size and scope to a, to a 20, 25, 30-year-old CAD package? No, of course not. I'm, I'm, but it, it does stack up pretty darn well, and it does do stuff that nobody else is doing. So uh, definitely, uh, Take a look. And by the way, you know, if you look at it just the way it is right now, just looking at this demonstration that we did in this very video, you can see that we can already do uh, some really cool stuff using the Onshape toolset just as it is. You add that to how fast it's growing, things are pretty exciting. All right, that's, uh, that's the CAD Junkie wrapping up. We'll talk to you later. See ya.